King Rostam was the king of Zerbulistan in Persia and a mighty warrior. One day, Rostam was a visitor in the palace of the king of Samongan city, while he waited for his splendid steed, Raksh to be returned to him as it was stolen by the king's soldiers. After a feast in his honor was held, Rostam went to sleep in his room. During the night, Tamina, the beautiful princess of Samongan, entered his room, told him of her admiration for his bravery and asked Rostam to marry her. Rostam was enamored of her beauty and agreed. The king of Samongan was only too happy to hear about the romance and arranged for Rostam and Tamina to be married. Rostam stayed in Samongan with Tamina for a few weeks and even a few days more, after his horse was found, but soon realized that he had to leave. Tamina informed him that she was pregnant with their baby. Rostam was overjoyed but since he had to leave, he left a jewel, an onyx with Tamina, requesting her to tie the gemstone on the baby's hair if she was a girl, or on the forearm if he was a boy. After this, Rostam tearfully left riding his horse. Tamina gave birth to a very beautiful baby boy. She named him Saharab. He grew up a big and handsome boy like his father. Saharab kept asking about the identity of his father, but his mother kept refusing to answer. When Saharab became a teenager, his mother finally told him that he was the son of the great warrior Rostam, grandson of the king and great warrior Zal, and great grandson of King Sam, another great warrior in the past. To prove this, Tumina gave Saharab some of Rostam's possessions including his dagger and some jewels. Tumina said she kept the identity of Saharab's father both from Saharab and Rostam because she feared Saharab would join his father and leave her alone and lonely. Saharab impulsively declared that he would raise a huge army to defeat King Kaikavas of Iran, and set his father and mother as king and queen. Saharab enlisted the help of Turanian king Ifrasyab to raise an army and headed to Iran to search for his father, even though his mother warned him to stay away from Ifrasyab. King Kaikavas received a letter from Gerzd Arm, caretaker of the fort of Sapid, located on the border of Iran and Tehran, that the fort was being overrun by an army from Tehran, led by a 14-year-old boy by the name of Saharab, from Turkestan. Saharab's face looked like that of the warrior Rostam. When the custodian of the fort by the name of Harzir, son of Gaz, was defeated and imprisoned by Suharab, Gaz's arm, the caretaker, immediately asked for urgent help from King Kaikavis, by sending a messenger through a secret route by night. Gaz's arm also fled with his family by night. The next morning, Suharab and his army entered the fort unopposed. King Kaikavas and his warriors Tuz, Keshvad, Gaz, Giv, Gurgan, Buharam, and Farahat, decided that the warrior Rostam was the only person who could lead an army successfully against the invaders. Giv was selected to summon Rostam from Zerbulistan. In his letter to Rostam, King K. Kavas praised Rostam and his family's services to Iran, and then requested his urgent help. He instructed Giv to return immediately with Rostam without resting. Giv immediately did so. Although Rostam received their message, he decided not to go immediately since he did not consider himself the king's servant who would immediately obey a summons and asked Giv to wait for him to get ready. For three days, Giv kept telling Rostam that the king would be enraged if they got late, but Rostam waited until the fourth day to go to Iran. However, King Kaikavas became furious and ordered Tuz to hang Giv and Rostam. This infuriated Rostam and jerked away Tuz who tried to pacify him. Rostam was so strong that he swept away Tuz like a small child. Rostam reminded the king that he owed his position to Rostam, who saved his life many times, and that God alone was his provider, not the king. He immediately left the palace intending to leave Iran permanently. The warriors were upset with King Kaikavas for insulting and angering the mighty Rostam. Upon their request, Guz, the aged warrior, chastised the king for being rude to Rostam, who saved the king several times from death. Guz warned the king that he will bear the blame for Iran's defeat, because it became clear that only Rostam could be a match for Saharab and his army. King Kaikavas realized his mistake and sent an apology to Rostam. Some of the warriors accompanied Guz with the message asking Rostam to forgive the king since even though the king was ill-tempered, he was actually good and noble. 
They also told Rostam that by disregarding Iran, he was punishing not the king but the very people of Iran since they would bear the brunt of the invaders' attacks. Yet, Rostam insisted that he was no servant of the king who treated him terribly. The senior warrior, Guz, tried another tact to convince Rostam. He told Rostam that the king, soldiers, and people of Iran thought that Rostam actually left Iran because he was afraid to face the young warrior of Turkestan, and that all the soldiers and warriors believed that if the great Rostam was not ready to face this young warrior, then they themselves stood no chance at all against him, and so all of them are trying to desert the army and flee. This ploy touched Rostam's heart, and after further persuasion, he agreed to return to Iran. Overjoyed to know that Rostam was coming back, King Kai Kavis made elaborate preparations to meet Rostam again. When he arrived, the king met him with profuse apologies. He asked for forgiveness for his impulsive burst of anger, and bemoaned his natural ill temper. So then, both the king and Rostam accepted each other's respective superior positions, and the king declared a feast for their reconciliation. The next day, the Iranian army led by Rostam, with the other warriors, marched to the fort of Sapid. Homan, that Iranian commander, and Soharab, saw from the fort the Iranian army. Homan was troubled, but Soharab was confident he could fight against any warrior. He was also excited about the possibility of meeting his own father Rostam. The Iranian army was stationed some distance away from the fort of Sapid. After dark, Rustam decided to disguise himself and infiltrate the fort to gather intelligence. Hiding in a dark corner, he saw Soharab sitting calmly discussing strategy with his leaders. On one side were the Iranian commanders Baman and Homan and on the other side was his mother's brother, Zindihar Azam, prince of Samongan. He was specifically sent by Tamina. Soharab's mother, to identify Rustam and initiate the meeting between father and son. Zindehar Azam noticed suspicious movement in the dark corner where Rustam was hiding, and went to investigate. Rustam was unable to identify Zindehar Azam in the darkness. Zindehar Azam saw the silhouette of Rustam but also failed to identify him, and tried to raise an alarm. Rustam immediately hit him on his neck powerfully, killing him. And so the only person who could identify father and son to each other was gone. Rustam returned to his camp and apprised the Iranians of the situation, even describing how magnificent Soharab was as a man. Wondering why Zindehar Azam had not returned for a long time, Soharab sent a servant, who returned with the shocking news of Zindehar Azam's death. At this, the grieving Soharab immediately realized that an intruder had entered the fort. He decided to launch an attack the following day. The following day, Soharab went to a point where he could see the tents of the Iranian army. He took with him Hazir, the erstwhile commander of the fort, whom he had imprisoned. Soharab ordered Hazir to identify which tent belongs to each warrior. Although Hazir identified each tent to Soharab accurately, he deceived Soharab by claiming that the tent that he knew belonged to Rustam belonged to a warrior recruited from China. This he did to prevent the Turanians from making a surprise attack on Rustam. Soharab was disappointed he was unable to locate his father Rustam. After this, Soharab immediately went to King Kai Kavas's tent and challenged him to assign any Iranian warrior to fight Soharab. Frightened at Soharab's tall and muscular stature, he immediately sent for Rustam, who immediately prepared for and went to the battlefield. Rustam and Soharab decided to go to a secluded place to fight. Along the way, Soharab felt something about Rustam and inquired if he was Rustam. Rustam responded that he was a small warrior compared to the great Rustam. At the secluded place, the warriors fought with spears and swords, and then with mace and bow arrows. The duel lasted for a day with neither warrior gaining the upper hand. At sunset, they decided to call it off for the next day in which they would fight without weapons. Rostam had never faced such a powerful opponent. 
feeling weak, he sent a message to King Kai Kavas not to continue the war if he was killed, because no one else could then fight against their mighty opponent. So Harab for his part felt guilty about fighting a much older opponent. He also had a strange feeling of attachment towards this opponent of his. He dreaded the possibility of actually fighting against his own father. The following day they fought again. So Harab once again felt affection toward his opponent and begged him to reveal his true identity. Rustam misunderstood the boy's tender pleas as a ploy to soften him and so did not reveal his true identity. Instead he challenged Soharab to fight on even though he himself felt weak. During the fight, Soharab easily pinned down Rustam, but Rustam deceived him by saying it was against the rules to strike an opponent during the first time he was flung to the ground. Soharab, partly due to his affection, believed his opponent and let him go. It was only when he told Homan about it that he found out he was deceived. Rustam, though, was shaken by his experience. He prayed to God, whom he knew as Ahura Mazda, to renew his strength. He got it back and fought Soharab the next day in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Rustam, by now regaining his strength, immediately got the upper hand, flung Soharab to the ground and immediately stabbed him with a dagger. Soharab, still believing his opponent would reciprocate what he did, was stunned. He cried foul and lamented that he would no longer be able to find his father, for whom he launched his campaign in the first place. But since his opponent killed him treacherously, Soharab threatened that his father would avenge his death. But hear me now, fierce man, and tremble. For behold, Rostem, my father, whom I seek through all the world, will surely avenge my death, though I, alas, shall never see him now. When he learneth of my doom, however, beware. For if thou shouldst become a fish, and lose thyself in the depths of the sea, or a star, to hide thyself in the highest heaven, verily my father would draw thee forth from thy hiding place, to wreak vengeance upon thy head. Ah, how his heart will be filled with wrath and sorrow when it shall be told unto him that Sorab, his son, perished in the quest after his face. The mighty Rustam was shocked to hear this and asked for any evidence that Soharab was indeed Rustam's son. Soharab ripped open his armor and showed the onyx gemstone that Rustam asked Amina to tie around his baby's arm. Upon seeing this, Rustam held his son's head to his lap, screaming in deep sorrow to know he killed his own son. But Soharab was happy and contented that he had finally found his father. He made a final request to Rustam to spare the Turkish and Turanian soldiers, as now without him they would be leaderless and would not be able to fight the mighty Iranian warriors. Soharab's body was taken to Zabulistan, where his grandparents Zal and Rodbeha broke down on seeing his lifeless body. His father Rustam had a new Dakmai erected in the shape of a horseshoe, and laid the body of his son on it. The news of Soharab's death spread everywhere. In Turan, Homan broke the news to Afrasiab, who was also grieved over Soharab's death. The tragic news immediately reached the king of Samongan, who informed Tamina. Tamina, who was excitedly preparing for the return of her young son along with his father, broke down at this news, unable to take it. In a frenzy, she destroyed everything that reminded her of Soharab. Unable to bear the pain, she often lapsed into unconsciousness. She put on a black dress and lived the rest of her short life in a dazed state, dying within a year of her son's death.